Okay, so we are now recording our but, uh, just I mean, who, uh, Okay, just, okay, no problem. But I'll, it, it, it might not take too long because I don't have uh, like so much of the analysis done on Grimo Lab. I do use it for extraction of data and then I use my own, I use statistical method of analyzing. I okay. That is. So let me. So we are now on the Chaos Grimoire Lab working group call, October 29, 2019. And we were just talking before we start the recording that maybe Armstrong could share some of the work that he is doing with the Grimoire Lab. So if I understand it correctly, Armstrong, yeah. uh, you are using Percival to extract data. Yeah. Um, what data sources do you use? Git? Uh, OpenStack. OpenStack. Mm -hmm. So OpenStack is the community you're analyzing. Yeah. What? Um, where does the data come from? GitHub, GitLab? From Garrett, from Launchpad and Garrett. Garrett and Launchpad. And then when you have Percival, you run the command. Um, do you, what do you do then? What's the next step? Like I run Percival to extract, for example, let's start with Launchpad, right? I extract all the, the issues because Launchpad deals with issue tracker, like bug, bug fixes, uh, like reporting bugs, the bug number, the date that it was reported and the project. So I need to know to extract this information. Then I also go on Garrett. I extract the information on Garrett, then I try to map the information on Launchpad to the one that, uh, the, like the bug that was reported on Launchpad, I map it to the fixing of those bugs at Garrett. Then I do some other informations. Okay, so conceptually, I understand your process of extracting the data and then connecting it. From a technical point of view, um, you use Percival, and then I assume you use the JSON that it outputs. Yeah. And then what do you do with the JSON? I parse the JSON. I, there are a couple of tools that I use like this. Uh, there are command line tools that I parse the JSON to extract the information. Let's say I keep all the the, the box uh, on either a JSON file or CSV file, but for my case, I keep them on CSV file. It doesn't really matter the format because I will later on pass them on data frame on pandas. Yeah, so I extract this data. I put, let's say, the a block ID, the date that it was reported, the project or the file that was concerned on with that block. Then I go on Garrett. I extract all the the, the uh, reviewer comments, the informations that are there. For example, the message, the commit, and uh, the time, things like that. I try to map. I first of all look for commits that were fixing bugs because that's what I'm mostly working on for the project I'm explaining now. I map this uh, commit to the, the bug that was reported on Launchpad. Because the ones that are on Gary that are emerged find themselves in Git. 
So at least we know that the ones that are in, on Git are the ones that are merged. Now, but we want to know which commit uh, ID was fixing the, the bug that was reported on Launchpad. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, Garrett is the code reviewer. Yeah, um, the code reviewer, yeah, the code review to, tool. Yeah, so does Garrett also have the Git information? Yes. Because normally, like on Garrett, when you they review, normally they have if it is accepted, they need to to merge the, the the code, so that information is found on Git. Okay. Okay, and then you map the commits to the launchpad issues. Yeah. Based on the. The bug ID based on the bug ID as it is mentioned in git commits. Yeah. Or commit messages. The commit messages, yeah. Okay. And so this analysis, so I understand you parse the JSON that comes from Percival and you create a CSV file. Yeah. And then you load that CSV file in Python into a data frame. Yeah. And then inside of that Python data frame is where you connect the commits with the issues. I also extract inform the get information the same way I extracted Launchpad, right? So I have two separate files then the the panda thing is now like where i start doing my analysis on the data that I have mined that i had mined earlier okay i, I lost you there for a moment you okay. said you have two files yeah first you have to mine launchpad then secondly you mine garrett but right. to understand what is happening on launch part, we need first of all to know that there were bugs that were reported on. Uh, there were bugs that were reported on launch part, and when they are fixing that bug, all the information about the bug fixing happens on Garrett because that's where they do the code review and things like that. Right. Yeah. So the two files you have is one all of the launch pad issues and. The exactly. second file is all of the Garrett. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like the perceiver tool enables us to extract this uh, the all the information from Launchpad and all the information, let's say, from Garrett. So there are tons of information that we we can generate or we can extract from Garrett from Launchpad. There are so many informations that because we extract all the like yeah. history, yeah. So we cannot analyze so many other metrics and things like that. Okay, so you take the JSON file that you get and you basically simplify it by converting it into a CSV. Yeah, I can still work with the JSON. It's very doable. It's just that for my particular use. I prefer to to keep it on CSV. So parsing it was also trivial for my purpose. Okay. It doesn't stop me at all to work with the JSON. No, no, but you said in your analysis you yeah. use the CSV. Yeah. And so you load the CSVs, both of them, Launchpad and Garrett CSVs, into the data frames, data frame, and then yeah. you use. Mm, uh, some Python script to yeah. connect the two. The two, yeah. yeah. Because normally I'll use now like regular expressions to I, I extract the commit only the commit messages from Garrett, only that messages. Then I search in the message wherever they were mentioning that particular bug that I'm interested with. Because you know bugs have trailers. For example, in OpenStack, you have like B, I, G for Berg, a hyphen, 
then they put some seven or six or seven digit numbers following. They have different trailers that they use to describe a bird. That you know this message is actually addressing a particular bird. Okay. Yeah, so we need that kind of regular expressions to, to be very sure we are talking about a bird. Then we also need to be sure we, we differentiate a change ID from a commit ID because th that's a common phenomenon in OpenStack. You have a lot, like the 40 uh, digit hexadecimal numbers, like the SHA, the same string, the, the same uh, 40 characters, you still find them on change ID, on uh, like commit ID. Okay, so change ID and commit ID are very similar and you need to do Yeah, we need analysis. just the commit ID, yeah. Yeah. So just, just to extract the information to keep them in a proper format. Okay, that makes sense. And then you do your magic on top of that. Yeah. Then like what one of the things that I was working was to look for like this SZ algorithm to know when the uh, which uh, particular change introduce a bug. Answering. Yes. What questions are you asking if this is for your research? Like what are you hoping to answer with this? Maybe you've already explained that. Well, the thing is, uh, I will just be uh, a bit narrow here for one, like the one that I'm explaining, we just want to see like the, the quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to oh, measure uh, the, uh, the community or the code. Yeah, the code. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we know the more the, more the code is buggy, mm -hmm. the lesser the quality will be. And if a lot of changes are introducing bugs, then that it's not a good uh, thing. Okay. If, for example, people touch, like do a lot of changes and those changes tend out to introduce more bugs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what the goal of this description? Like this particular thing, what I'm describing, that's a goal that we are trying to work okay. on. Mm -hmm. But there are so many other informations that uh, we could do with the information we extracted with the when we use like the perceval because we have like a complete data. Okay. It's so huge and we can do a lot of analysis. I was just talking about one use case. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Armstrong, so interesting, uh, it's really interesting what you do with perceval. So uh, I have a question for you. Do you think uh, okay. what you do can be uh, like uh, um, how to make in the sense that uh, maybe we could have something in Grimoire Lab that try to relate uh, uh, Garrett and uh, Launchpad, for instance. Yeah. Or that there is a lot of uh, manual work that cannot be replicated for uh, every case. Let, let me ask this in, in another way, and please, Valeria, correct me if I'm understanding you wrong. I guess. The question we wanted to get solved here is what do you, Armstrong, need to relate the information from one data source to another? I mean, for instance, what we usually do is relying on the author name or the author UUID to get a relation across all the data sources. So for your use case, I guess you have yeah, I don't know, a number of different fields to rely on in order to match data from one data source to another. Uh, do you know what fields you are using? Are there imperceivable so we could maybe build an enriched index with those fields and then start working from there, something like that? Mm, okay, I see, I see the question. Like, uh, it would, for example, let me just answer the first uh, question. The Berg ID is something that I use to link the two data sources for the particular use case I am explaining. Because usually a bug is reported before they start working on it on Gary. So Launchpad will have, Launchpad or Storyboard will always have the data first. Sometimes 
the information is like the commit is already there in Garrett, but nobody knew it was a, it was buggy. Then at some point in time, it will be reported that no, this commit actually has a bug. Then they'll report it on Launchpad, but it was already there in Garrett. So the thing we use like to like that particular field or the key that we use to link is the bug ID because the launch part will have the bug ID when it is reported, it is created a key and they will be discussing on uh, that bug ID on Garrett as well. So both will match. And then we will also keep the date that it was reported. Yeah, we also know from that point, we will know the, the person who reported the, the bug. To know who actually created that bug, Garrett will be the person now to tell us based on the commit ID. So th these are two different data sources, but what we actually link them together is the bug ID from Launchpad and that bug ID will also appear in Garrett. So we now link both. Okay, so the bug ID in Garrett appears in the commit that solves the bug? Yes. yes. Yeah, and then from that, how do you know what's the origin of the bug? To know the origin of the bug, first we need to know that the bug was reported. And when that bug is reported, it means it, the, the, there is a commit ID, right? So if we go like the changes for the SSZ, we need to know all the revisions for that particular file, which revision actually touched that file. Now, based on the date that the, the bug was reported, we go below, like we go in some steps before it was reported to see the, to do a diff. So when you see the diff, you, it will give you the information on the change. Then we will know, it is not like 100% accurate. The SSZ algorithm is not 100% accurate, but it, it works. Yeah, so if I understood it right, uh, the thing is, there is kind of a heuristic to know in which commit the bug was introduced because yes, yes. you are using diff to see the changes, so you have kind of understand the code to know what changes affected the, the buggy code. So you need to know also the specific lines of code that uh, were fixed by the... Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I understood. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if we could do something, Valeria, to automate that. But maybe looking for the lines touched in the bag could, could help. Maybe using git blame or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because as we said, uh, even the creator, like, when the SSZ was introduced, there have been a lot of modifications and things like that. It is not very perfect, like 100%, but it's very useful because it gives you like these two commits, one of them actually introduced a bug. If we are talking of a small... Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe... I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, I just uh, wanted to say that maybe we could have something like a list of potential uh, target commits. Yeah. Something like that. I yeah. don't know, if, Valerio, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, the, probably the best approximation is, uh, is to have like uh, um, an external file where uh, things are related. So for instance, uh, this file is calculated maybe with the algorithm. And then we take this file and uh, we add the data to the to the Richard indexes. So basically, we don't do the computation inside Grimoire Lab, but just we rely on uh, on a file that has generated it with, uh, uh, I mean, the algorithm that, uh, for instance, Ar Armstrong is using. What do you think? Sorry, Valerio, I was writing in the chat <laughs> to Luis because he can he can't hear us so. I didn't hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, well, not, uh, I was just saying that uh, maybe we could have like uh, a study that takes us input uh, a, a file 
in this file we have the relation between uh, uh, commits, for instance, and uh, and bug reports or uh, or other things. This file can be calculated with uh, an external script that maybe is uh, the one Armstrong uh, is using that's implementing the algorithm, and uh, and that's it. So it's not perfect, but at least uh, we can then build on top of it. Yes, I guess uh, the easiest approach should be something like that. Mm, maybe we could go for the for this approach and then start building things on, on top of this, depending on the use cases we we wanted to cover. Anyway, I think we don't have a Richard, uh, uh, um, I mean, we don't have a Richard for Launchpad uh, because I don't think we have panels for Launchpad. So maybe we could also, I mean, use this call to understand what we could uh, have in the Richard data of Launchpad and then try to have like uh, a dashboard for it. Yeah, um, maybe the, the goal of this could be having the issues needed to to start building this. So maybe that could be useful for, for Armstrong. Even if we are not producing the final Richard index, but but just to try to understand how can uh, how we can deal with this kind of information. Yeah, I think also there are several communities that would like to know this kind of we would like to measure this kind of metrics to see how, like for example, the health of a community will also try to touch on its quality. If the community is having a lot of bug, buggy codes, bugs and things like that, that might also be an indicator that is not very healthy, if I'm not wrong on that. Because we know how much it takes time to fix bugs and you know, sometimes uh, there are lots of commits, even though there are reviewers, they go through, but then at some point in time, they'll realize that all oh, this commit was actually buggy. It was not actually addressing what it was supposed to do. So having that kind of uh, metrics will help a lot of open source community. And many projects I know want to know this kind of how they could measure the quality. I know about uh, this, uh, this Hadoop guys, is Apache people, yeah, the people from Apache. They, I saw something similar they were trying to do in this direction, but it was not really concrete. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty much sure if we have something that at least we could have a platform that they could run this kind of algorithm there, it would be helpful for so many communities. Yeah. I I guess so, because I have been told about different use cases that are based on measuring the, the issues depending on the tags. And usually one tag the communities are interested in is uh, bug, and the other one uh, usually is the priority of the bug. So mm -hmm. you, they are not only interested in the time to solve issues, but uh, specifically in the time to solve specific issues that are bugs and uh, among bugs, those with specific priorities. And as you say, this is useful to to understand the, the health of the community because one could expect that bugs and in particular those bugs that are highly prioritized get more attention than other uh, different issues. Mm -hmm. So if we could measure not only the time to solve a bug, but the time that bug is there, or at least some approach of how long that bug was in my code could be useful to complement the, to, uh, to build a more detailed view of the information because you could say, well, this bug was solving a week, but the real problem is that in average or in median, a bug is in our code for more than one year. So even if I'm really quick solving the bug, 
my code was buggy for a long time. Mm -hmm. so, things like that. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I'm stronger. You could open an issue in uh, Grimoire Lab. I don't know. And we try to uh, we try to advance a bit on uh, on the on this. I don't know. What, what do you think? Okay. okay. I mean, we cannot really promise uh, a lot, but at least if we have an issue, then we can uh, we can try to push. Uh, this thing forward and see how to uh, integrate. Uh, I mean, this relation between different data sources in uh, in Grimoire. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because I even think uh, like Grimoire Lab also has a way of mining story, but that really makes it complete, especially for OpenStack. Uh, Storyboard. Um, I'm not sure if we have this data. So uh, there is something about uh, discussion on, on GitHub. So to get like, uh, 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 to get the, um, I mean, uh, where an issue is uh, in the, in a, in a workboard. Yeah, GitHub recently introduced uh, a way to, like a Kanban, a way to move uh, issues. But then I'm not sure we have uh, other things. I don't know, uh, Alberto, you, you record something? No, I don't have any further information to add. I think you know more than me about that. Um, okay, Armstrong. Uh, so when you refer to storyboard, you refer to a specific data source? Because maybe we... You know, like OpenStack uses Launchpad, but it seems of recent they were migrating to storyboard. Okay. So definitely in the near future, all the bugs will be appearing, but in storyboard. Because like what they said, storyboard is more helpful for an ecosystem, but Launchpad was created more for project level. Is but this the link that I post in the chat, the storyboard? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so they develop it because sometimes you remember there, there was a problem with Linux and the Linux kernel and Debian, where there will be a bug that is they are fixing in Debian, whereas that bug has already been resolved at the Linux kernel, but nobody knew about it. This cross bug platform, things like that. So like OpenStack, which has so many projects, interdependent projects and things like that. Launchpad is great, but it was designed more for projects but now for an ecosystem, launch uh, storyboard gives a bigger picture, which really fits their need. But in any case, the, the issues there or the stories are, are quite related to what they have been doing in, in the story in Launchpad. So it's just a data source. As of now, most of the things that happen at storyboard, they still mirror it at Launchpad but sometime in the near future, maybe every traffic now will be focused on storyboard and that is where a lot will be happening. So it's just something that we can think of it as well to see if we can integrate it. If it doesn't fit now. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, then uh, again, uh, we have to uh, discuss with uh, um, the other people in Viterbi, yeah? if they uh, if they are interested in uh, in this. However, I mean, uh, the the backend for a storyboard could be uh, could be done from the community. So, in, if you are interested in any this, we could work with, together to have the backend. Yeah, if if we think this is an interesting use case, even if Viterbi is not going to do this in the short term. We could even schedule uh, one or two sessions like this, or maybe a separate call to work on a backend life. So this could be even fit in the context of, of this to let community know how to build a backend and how to get uh, something inside remote lab. When just think or you feel that the architecture is there, but not the component you need. So that's another possibility. 
Yes, I mean, I like the idea of uh, like uh, uh, coding a background uh, live or uh, almost live. So maybe it could be one of the sessions, I mean, one of the next sections, or not maybe the next one, but uh, uh, one of the upcoming ones. I like the idea as well. So I'm sorry, you're much closer in OpenStack. Um, so the way I understood this is Launchpad is going to be depreciated and all OpenStack projects will be using Storyboard. Yeah, I, uh, the thing is, I'm not sure if the depreciated is the right word because Launchpad is designed by Ubuntu community. It's a different system that they were using but now they have they came out with what is really like a storyboard which is more of an open stack thing correct so storyboard is developed by OpenStack. yeah and all open stack projects will be switching to storyboard for their issue tracking yeah so they will no longer use launch pad yeah I don't know how long it will happen based on the community discussion and things like that. The migration is taking place. Hopefully it has taken place, but they are still mirroring issues at Launchpad. So, but hopefully at some point in time, it's definitely that they will be fully using but the storyboard. Okay. Do you have an overview of how many projects already switched to storyboard? Well, I will need to verify that. I will need to talk to like the, there's one uh, person with the release team. She's very uh, knowledgeable about this. I can ask her that. Okay. Do you know of at least one project that already switched off? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, no, uh, Cinda, Cinda switched. Cinda switched. If I'm not wrong, Nova also switched. A couple of projects have switched quite all right, but as I said, they are still mirroring most of the changes. Are still, it's just like uh, it's, you still see some of the information happening on Launchpad. But I'm not, I'm not sure 100% they have migrated. That I'm not sure, but I have to verify to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, you, so Launchpad, no, um, Storyboard is created by OpenStack Yeah. Uh, for OpenStack. So it's a very limited use right now, right? I, there are no other open source projects who've adopted this yet. For, for that, I am not the best person to say, except I have to find out. Okay. Hey, yeah. I, I'm just curious, you know? <laughs> it's just the first time I hear about Storyboard and okay. now I want to know all about it. <laughs> yeah, because like based on the the community uh, demands and their use cases, the storyboard actually gives a bigger picture of seeing how the the project in an ecosystem works. Whereas yeah. with Launchpad, it was more independent. For yeah. example, two projects might be working on the same issue independently. So uh, Launchpad had that limitations of relating that, okay, this project is already been addressed with this project, you know, the cross-project cross, cross project platform is, was limited. Okay, perfect. So Valerio Alberto, you two think that we can implement Storyboard just as an exercise in two sessions? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I have to look at the API, but it seems that it's possible. In the sense, we can have something simple, and then uh, maybe I have like a second section where we go a bit uh, like uh, deeper, but I guess it's possible, at least for the part of Perseva. Uh With respect to Elk, uh, maybe uh, then we have to discuss what we want to have in the dashboard, but that is Alberto. Uh, the most knowledgeable person. I'd say that probably we can start opening the issue with the use case as Valerio told you, Armstrong. So once we have the use case, the community can start discussing things there. And at the same time, 
if Valerio thinks that the API is easy enough, we could schedule this live session for, I don't know, maybe, I, I, I don't want to say next week because probably it's too soon. And we have some things we have been delayed for, from, I think like two or three weeks ago. But maybe in 15 days or three weeks, we could have that, that session for, for the backend. And in, during that time, probably we, we will have time to discuss the use case and to have a clear view of what the goal will be for the enriched index. So I say we could do the backend and probably in the future we could then building the, the panel. Not sure about the enricher, maybe the enricher <laughs> needs to be built out of the these calls because ELK is not the <laughs> most beautiful part of Grimoire Lab, but I think it's doable. So Armstrong, is, is the, having this uh, backend, having the ability to collect data from storyboard in Percival, is that something that would help you in your research? Is a lot, a lot. And I know a lot of other uh, people who are like looking for this kind of information as well. <laughs> I know some universities that are people who are really looking for this kind of information. So you will not only be for us, but you will be surprised to know that a lot of people will benefit from it as well. Okay. Guys, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I remember we started to talk about the storyboard kind of three or four years ago when we were working with the OpenStack people. So by that time, it's, it was just a prototype, but I guess something is, now is, is a robust product, I guess, a, a stable product. So, so it's nothing really new. So maybe it, it is interesting to, to, to have a look. So and I do like the idea of, of having a look at the API in the next sessions and start with the skeleton of the of the backend. Maybe it's even even more uh, more useful for all of us to share the the things that Valerio is having a look at before starting to create the the backend. For instance, having a look at the API in order to see if the API. Uh, Fills the the needs of the personal backend and uh, how to how to tackle that. Maybe it's, it's a it's a uh, it's, it's good to start from the very beginning. What about doing everything live? I mean, yeah, we are sure that the community is interested on in this. We have these calls, and we basically can do whatever we want here because we are a community. So we could start from scratch and let's see if in maybe a month or something like that, we have something something to, to work with in the sense of building a real dashboard and having the data there. Of course, we don't need to start today or next week, but just fixing a date and from that date, we start working and uh, we only stop working on that if uh, we end with a dashboard or if after a complete session, we don't get any really valuable work done. So I'm sorry, I have a question for you. Um, do you already collect data from storyboards? Do you have some experience with the API or anything? Uh, yeah. How because the, the API that they have and the instructions, I followed them and I extracted some information from there. OK. So then it would be good if you're interested to join, and then you can help us with your knowledge that you already have on the um, API. Okay. So just to, to back up and talk in general, 
terms, what is the process of adding a new data source to Grimoire Lab? If you were to just say generic, what are the things that need to happen? Well, let me lead this because I'm the one that usually asks for this to Valerio or the other people in the engineering team. So the usual process is we have a need, for instance, we need to track that uh, or this uh, data source. Then we have at least one use case on top of that data source. So the very first step is analyzing the API to make sure we can collect the information we need. So for that, we need to make sure about the use case. And from that, we get the raw data, analyze the raw data, and the find and reach it index. So yes, make sure we have the data available, extend perceival, yeah. The number three will be defining the enriched index. And the fourth is building the dashboard. And from this, what we do is iterating between two, three, and four. Until we have the dashboard we want. And there is an exception depending on the data source, that is when we need something like a study, Valerio mentioned it before about this. A study is something that is built on top of the usually enriched indexes, but it could be also on top of raw indexes. And the idea is uh, calculating some extra information that is not available in the regular enriched index. So in that case, we will need to implement another component that will be the study. For instance, I'm talking about onion analysis for Git or for any other data source. You take the information for the, from the enriched index and do something on top of that. For instance, the, the analysis we wanted to, to do for bugs will be an study. And that will be the last step. Once we have the data, once we understand the data, and we have a basic dashboard on top of the data, we can start building these kind of things to offer a wider perspective. I don't know if Valerio wants to add something. Uh, no, I think uh, you summarized uh, the uh, I mean, the process uh, pretty well. Uh, so yeah, generally the iteration is uh, once we get the data, then we have to, to manipulate it and create the rich index. Uh, with respect to personal, what is important and we generally look at carefully is uh, uh, the possibility to fetch data in an incremental way. So uh, after a given date. Because uh, to simplify the, the extraction process, we generally take the data from the very beginning until uh, uh, today. Uh, this uh, is basically to simplify some technical problems in case uh, the, the collection process stops, then we can just uh, uh, re-execute the process from the last uh, date uh, that the process died. 
uh, for instance, for Gavik, we have a problem because we cannot uh, get the information as we want. So we have to collect the data from uh, the last day until uh, the, the oldest uh, changes. And then when we have a problem in the collection, we have to restart the process again. But, but this is just uh, some uh, minor issues we can have some with some data sources. Okay. Well, if you were to go through this process, then the first step we said was to identify the need for the new data and data source. So Armstrong, maybe you can help us with identifying what are the things we need from storyboard and why we need them and what the use case is. So we can document this here and then we can use that in a future meeting to start actually collecting the data. Okay. So identify the need for a storyboard. Why do we want this data? So from what I understood is open stack community use storyboard as their issue tracker. Yeah. Then why why do you want the issue tracker data? I think also they have these uh, blueprints. So, uh, they can use it to suggest blueprints and things like that. But I'll, I, as I said, I'll just give me some time to really explore it more, to be very concrete with the information I give. But uh, if I have to ask the, answer the other question, why do we need issue tracker? First, uh, every, every open source community, be it uh, which one, they either use like the Boxilla, they either use Launchpad or any other thing to track issues. It's, not, it's something that is very important for any open source project or an ecosystem. Now, if we need to 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 keep a any ecosystem project or like any ecosystem healthy to make sure that we address bugs those we must have a platform where those bugs are reported where they are where they are categorized or classified like i think uh i've forgotten who said about like the severity of the, the bird if we cannot classify it first of all then how can we prioritize things like that so we need this kind of information Okay, so what do we specifically need? We need things like issue IDs. Yeah, the date, especially the date also that it was reported, that's very important. And who reported the bug, which project or which file was affected. What file was affected yeah. by an issue? Yeah. And this is after connecting Garrett and Storyboard, right? So upfront, when they are reporting a bug, you, you, you need to know the, the particular file that that bug was affect, that affected, the bug was affecting which, affected which file. So oh, this is an issue tracker. You need to know because if, for example, you say, okay, I found a bug, where did you find that bug, which file? and how the, like which file was affected on, by that bug. And that is reported in the issue. The issue tracker, yeah. Because sometimes it can be helpful later on to see if you have like in an ecosystem with a, a cross project. If a particular project is having a, an increase, uh, let's say, a, issue the number of bugs are increasing in that particular project more than the others that can also be an indicator that you know you can pay specific attention why is that happening for example the case of openstack uh, there is another use case that we are running to see how contributors like people who do uh, code 
collaborative code or those who did it like solo. That's another thing that we will we'll be working in the near future, like in the next uh, weeks to come. Which of these two people uh, make more, you know, contribute quality, high quality code than the other? And if it is something open source community can think about it when they are doing contribution. So at the end of the day, we need a system like open source will think a system that will really keep track of how the projects are doing over time in terms of quality is helpful. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry if you, you said this, um, maybe I have missed it, but are you using any standard of quality? Uh, come again, please. A standard? Yeah, are you using any standard for the quality? I mean, in order to, to say that this, this project, the quality is good, and for a second project, the quality is not good? Well, I just use it like that directly at this point, but normally there are metrics that uh, are already available, that it, like a group of metrics that defines quality, but, but it's one major uh, indicator. I know there are a couple of research papers that have pointed to this. So we use some of those uh, already pointed indicators like matrices and they have really pointed like bug fixing and things like that. If a project is really like buggy, it affects the quality. Okay, so I know we have one minute left. Uh, Alberto, is this description already enough to get started or do we have to pick this up again next time to refine the need and describe the use case better? Well, I'd say for this very first approach to get the data will be enough. I don't know if Valerio misses something here. Uh, no, I guess it's good to, I mean, it's a good start. Uh, I mean, the next step is just to have a look at the, uh, the API and see uh, how to get the data and if the data matches with the requirement. Okay. So then we'll leave that up for the next time, for next week. Thank you everyone for participating. And uh, let's close our Greenmore Lab call because we have the weekly call here in less than a minute. One question, Georg. When you guys are, are changing your, your time zone? We're changing it on Sunday. This Sunday? Yes, this coming oh, Sunday. Okay. So then we will be back to normal. Okay, thank you.